paying any meaning accounting accounting for bonds and debt instruments. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email and our phone number. And the source for this presentation is a text that's been around a long time, the Kiso and Wygant Intermediate Accounting text that's published by Wiley.com, where you'll find some great information. We were talking about in the prior video bonds priced at a discount and those priced at a premium. And we're looking at them from the bond issuer's standpoint. And so far, we've looked at the bond priced at a discount. And we were in the discussion of the bond priced at a premium. So I want to go back over that ground on PowerPoint. Premium just in um, everyday life means something more valuable when you pay a premium for something. And the same is true of bonds. If you think of a scenario where interest rates decreased, new bonds, new debt, for 10 years would be at a lower rate than before. In this example, it's now 6%. So as a result, if you were an investor and you were able to find a bond paying 7%, which is more than the current market for 10-year debt, that would be more valuable, which means it would have a higher price. I'm going to go over to Excel, and I'm going to talk about those bond entries again that we saw. We issued a bond and we got more than $1,000 for it. We got $1,020. However, the repayment of that bond is based on par or the face amount of $1,000. That's the amount stated here on the bond certificate. So the liability that we have to pay back is only $1,000. The difference between the cash and the bond payable we're going to create a separate account called premium on bond payable $20. That's our entry when we issue the bond. Interest payments act the same way. We pay interest to the owner, which is principal times interest times six months. Typically, corporate bonds pay semi-annually every six months. So we have an expense. Go back over here. We have an expense and we have cash. interest expense, debit, cash credit. Then we need to think about, okay, how are we going to handle that premium on the bond payable over time? We're going to take that premium and debit it to reduce it, and we're going to recognize an amount in bond income evenly over a 10-year period. The reason that its income is here in red, you received more, $1,020, then you must repay at maturity a thousand dollars. That was our entry right up here. So we're going to take the twenty dollars divided by ten years, the life of the bond, and we're going to recognize premium on bond income evenly each year for ten years. As we said before, at maturity, ten years out, we're going to reduce our liability of a thousand dollars. So we're going to debit to get rid of this credit. We no longer have the debt outstanding and we're going to pay cash of a thousand dollars. Let's look at that bond issued at a premium in the related journal entries in terms of how they would look in T accounts. What I put at the top of the page is premium means pay more, that the buyer paid more than the face amount of a thousand dollars. So I have balance sheet accounts on the left and income statement accounts on the right. So our first entry we have cash come in the door, debit. We set up a liability for the bond payable credit. The difference to make the entry balance goes to premium on bond payable. Every six months, we're going to recognize an interest expense by debiting and pay out cash. And also what we're going to do to process this premium on bonds payable to account for it is Every year, we're going to reduce the premium on bond payable and take some of that premium into income. This should say income. If you look at it after 10 years, you'll see that all of that premium that we originally had as a credit gets debited each year for 10 years so that the premium on bond account goes to zero. And we are going to take that into income each year over 10 years. So $20 goes into bond income, 
$20 comes out of premium on bond payable. So some things to remember here is premium means that the buyer is paying more than par. Discount on bond payable means the buyer is paying less than par. And if we're the issuer, we're going to have income from the premium and expense on the discount. But now let's look at it from the reverse. Let's look at it from the bond buyer's perspective. Because that perspective is going to be different. For the bond buyer, as we've mentioned in the uh, previous presentation in this one, a premium means you, the buyer, are going to pay more. A discount means you, the buyer, are going to pay less. So if you pay more, the premium to the buyer is going to be an additional expense. You paid more. The discount is going to mean income to the buyer. You paid less. Let's go over to Excel and let's look at this bond purchased at a discount. Here's our bond certificate. And now instead of the entries being on IBM's books, they're on Bob Smith's books. So he buys an investment. It's an asset, an investment in the IBM bond. He pays something less than $1,000. Now he's going to get paid $1,000 at maturity. You'll see at the bottom of the page in entry four. So we need to post $20 to make the entry balance, and we call this discount on bonds payable. Second entry, he gets cash and interest income from the bond every six months. We've seen that on the prior video as well from the other side, from the issuer's side. But if you look at red, he paid less, 980. Then he's going to receive at maturity $1,000. So that $20 is going to go gradually from the discount on bond payable account into bond income. And we're going to recognize that $20 evenly over a 10-year period. And then finally, again, repayment is based on par of $1,000. We're going to have cash come in the door, and we're going to sell that asset, the investment in the IBM bond. That's the end of part five of our presentation. You'll find part six on YouTube. For live tutoring, one-on-one, -on -one, and live chat sessions, you can go to our website, use our email address or our phone number. Thanks very much and we'll see you next time.